Uh, my name is Mike Kelly, um, head of CI at Keeling. And we have 15 minutes here to talk about the salient points of supply chain management and lean, which is almost impossible. Just a few points, hopefully, uh, that you can take away with you. If you look at supply chain management, we know it goes back to um, Forrester, 1958. He published uh, a paper which was um, which did represent the paradigm shift, um, a total new perspective where people do business. This was published in uh, 1958, New York Times. And so we've had nearly 60 years research, the research in supply chain uh, management since then. Um, I would say that the cornerstone of supply chain management and the synergy with Lean, uh, quite similar to what's been outlined here in the previous presentations, is the management of the relationships. So we know straight up that without people, we, uh, we get nothing done. And supply chain management, uh, what is it? Um, if I use the word risk or sustainability or even in integration, uh, most of us here would have a fairly good grasp. Of if we look at, uh, again, the uh, definition of supply chain management, uh, I think commentators and academics have failed to define supply chain management in such a way that uh, the subjectivity is removed. It's still very, very fuzzy and there is a black art attached to it. And yet we know that uh, the fundamentals and the principles of supply chain management work. So it's like the uh, famous economist said, sure it will work in practice but it will work in theory. And there's no shortage of theory out there uh, in supply chain management. But anyway, the great Professor Martin Christopher, he defines uh, supply chain management as the management of the relationships upstream and downstream. And we can understand that. Uh, and he's looking at the supply chain as a whole, not just the integrated internal supply chain. And this is where most people uh, find the difficulty. There's an alternative definition, uh, I think primarily because I've been working with LEAD for the last 30 years and supply chain uh, management. And it makes sense to me, it, uh, it, uh, I think it's, it's more objective and it's more simplistic. But I've used the word flows, and that's a word we use in lean uh, transformation. Uh, the relationships um, back into it again. I think a previous speaker spoke about uh, the respect for people because we get things done for people as managers or not. And then uh, uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable customer value. Customer value is fine, but we have to make profit as well. So, um, yet to be published, that's my um, simplistic definition of supply chain management. Fundamentals and principles, very, very simple. Uh, enhance customer service, whatever that means, and optimize costs and investments. So you see the synergy straight away with um, lean organization transformation. Two different philosophies, one going back uh, 80 years, one maybe 60, uh, but uh, the same principles, pretty much the same objectives. And the value proposition. Uh, it must contain elements of uniqueness. Why else would um, customers purchase your products? And so we're challenged now with coming up with uh, creativeness and differentiation and uniqueness. That's the challenge. The fundamental too is that everything comes to us uh, through a whole uh, series of uh, suppliers and processors and distributors. Uh, and if we look at the, the, the wider supply chain, look at the value chain uh, from room to tomb, it gives us a more holistic um, viewpoint, perspective of what uh, the supply chain is all about. There's an exemplar uh, aircraft manufacturer, 13,000 suppliers, uh, 47 countries, a huge spend, and they are, I'd say, exemplars in supply chain integration, ERP systems, relationship management, similar service level agreements right from the top to the bottom, 13,000. And of course, they have a Lee Agile supply chain, and that's the most difficult of all. And we at Keelings are moving towards uh, Lee Agile supply chain. The difficulty is in the decoupling point, uh, and we we'll might have worried about that in a few seconds. The fundamental uh, three, uh, moving on fairly quickly, again, is that uh, supply chain um, seeks to integrate. And that worries a lot of people as well integration. Uh, because if we look at most companies, and I would have maybe worked maybe uh, 90 in six years. What I found is in Ireland the reality is very little integration. Most organizations now are still um, silo functions. The operations and finance and manufacturing all work independently. But organizations uh, would be regarded as mechanistic. And if that's the case and you regard, let's say, um, one wheel of a car being the finance department, the wheel itself is taken off. The machine has got some value, 
but it doesn't really optimize or add uh, value unless it's part of the machine. And I say, if you ask yourselves uh, that question, um, what level of silo mentality exists in your organizations, I suspect quite, quite a lot. And the fourth fundamental is, never forget this, and again, it's a synergy and a linkage with uh, Lean. We get things done through people, and it's about relationships. And it's about the complexity of people, and it's about motivating and, uh, and avoiding demotivate, uh, demotivating employees, um, which sometimes we're quite good at. Subjectivity, yeah, it's, it's fuzzy. Um, we have to uh, bring it back down uh, to an element of meaningfulness, and we do this through measurement. You know, take out the subjectivity and measure using the uh, supply chain score reference metrics. If we do this, uh, we focus on the problems, on the solutions, rather than the department or the person, and it works. And then quickly on to the lean of philosophy. We don't go back to uh, ad nauseum. We've read about uh, the Hishi Ono and the Toyota production system. A lot more companies uh, since then were heavily involved in lean. And if we look, for example, at uh, Japan now and the electronics industry, one of the most uh, lean uh, organizations, industries in the world, and it's on its knees. So, um, you know, again, through recession, anorexic uh, um, supply chains have, uh, have driven this. Um, so lean is not a silver bullet, and it must be state specific. Why bother? Well, I remember very, very briefly when I bought my first car. Uh, most of you would remember the Mark II Cartina. But I remember it was like Elvis uh, driving around in his passion wagon. We come back those years, choice was limited. Right now, customers are discerning. Customers have a choice. And customers have a good perspective of value. Unless you add uh, something that's unique or differentiated, why would customers buy from you? And so the philosophies of lean uh, transformation and intelligent supply chain management offer means of establishing, enhancing and sustaining competitive advantage. And more than that, capabilities for self-renewal because what we're doing is we're attempting to create tomorrow's organization out of today's. But chances are your business model might not satisfy customers in three or even one year's time. So you need lean and you need intelligent supply chain management. Supply chain squeeze, and we can see this, especially coming off the back of recession. Uh, prices at the gate are going down and costs are going up, and that's the standard Keynesian economic uh, uh, model. The whole philosophy of lean, uh, again, Murma, he has defined it. Uh, many have tried to define lean, even some commentators and some industries claiming the very best definition for lean. We failed, I think, so far to define lean in any meaningful way, but we'll make an attempt at it. Merman, he's been around for quite a while, that's his attempt at defining lean in an objective way. He talks about, about continually uh, eliminating waste in every department, in every activity, in every process, not just in operations. And I think that's a misconception that exists out there in most industries. Again, we try to demystify the philosophy, remove some of the black art and understand the importance of value. What is value? Well, maybe value is what the customer is going to pay for. Do we understand value? And in terms of value migration, do we know when value is migrating? Well, we don't unless we work very, very close uh, to our customers and understand the markets. Before selecting lean tools, uh, we need to consider the appetite for change. I've seen on many occasions over the last couple of years, uh, with great enthusiasm, lean consultants pop in and they wish for the first lean tool, the Kaizen and the 5S, only to find that after a short while uh, the enthusiasm wanes and it's easy enough uh, to harvest apart from the low-hanging fruit. But that is not sustainable unless there's an appetite for change. And this is where we harness the support of the senior leadership team. There needs to be a vision, it's a fuzzy word again, but industries know where they're, um, they're going to. Organizations need to know where they'll be in three, four, five years' time. And we have to determine the as is. And I found in the last couple of years, most organizations don't know where they are. They don't know the as is. If you look at the um, activity-based costing and operations management and metrics, when you delve into the organization analysis, uh, most organizations don't know where they are. How then will they know where they're going to go? What the journey will it take? Everyone's involved in lean. Uh, nobody's exempt. And there's an alternative uh, definition. Again, just to throw the hat into the ring, um, yet to be published. Um, I'm looking at culture. 
because lean is about changing culture and it's a hard task. But somebody said one time to me that what is culture? Culture is what managers accept. If you have absenteeism at 4% of the organization, that's the culture. So you look at changing culture first uh, before you even attempt to lead. Every activity, not just in operations, and back again to the perception and the, uh, the ideology of value from the voice of the customer. Father of Lean, we spoke about him before. Uh, there's been many, many more since then, and indeed we have, uh, we have quite a few academics in Ireland, in this small country, who would be regarded as uh, world experts in Lean. There is no silver bullet, I get the example of the Japanese uh, electronics industry. Very, very quickly, the fundamentals, value, it was mentioned uh, by some past speakers here. Uh, you have to specify value. How do you do that? You get into a room uh, with, with moods of coffee and uh, a foot between the brow and you find out what the customer wants. Most of us don't know what customers want. Most of us don't. So you specify value from, from the perspective of the customer. Identify the value stream. Yes, we have to roll out. I mean, there's over 32 and growing, I think, uh, lean tools out there. But the value stream mapping is important. We need to know the value uh, chain internally, first of all. Um, and to map out and to identify, reduce and maybe eliminate, if possible, uh, some of the non-value adding activities. So we should know uh, our value chain. Previous speaker spoke about flow, and that's what it's about, without interruptions. Um, how many organizations know their OE in terms of manufacturing? But the reality is very, very few. What do we measure? What do we do with the information we get from OE? And so we, we try to avoid uh, interruptions uh, and, and stoppages. At the pull of the customer, depends on the industry. Uh, it works for some. In our business, um, short shelf life uh, forecasting is not always great. So we have an interesting uh, supply chain design, the Lee Agile supply chain, which is the most difficult of all, but we're not sure where the decoupling point is, because we have to have lean upstream, and yet we must have quick responsiveness uh, for the customer. So that's an interesting supply chain design which we're working on now, and we're using some uh, lean principles. And you always strive for perfection. And again, that's because uh, markets are changing, uh, customers are more discerning, what satisfies them now might not uh, satisfy them in an hour's time. And so you have to keep moving. Change over the last, uh, I'd say, five years, uh, far more than the previous ten. And this will continue. As we go into the, the third industrial revolution, nanotechnology and um, improvements in new materials and so forth. I'm sure you've read of all of these ad nauseum. We should know them. Uh, it takes uh, a skilled eye to be able to identify these in every activity, process and procedure, in every department, in organizations. And it takes skill and training to identify these. We've had great help to, uh, from the Enterprise Board um, in giving us great support uh, in training and development. But without training and development, um, there, there can be no lean journey or there can be no intelligence supply chain management. Again, a few synergies. Uh, understanding value, and it's worth thinking about this again, managing the relationships, and uh, respect for people. And of course, it all stems from uh, the new things, which is the voice of the customer. Those are the obstacles in um, rolling out uh, lean transformation, lack of clear executive vision, inadequate training and development, Lack of effective communication strategies throughout. Everybody must know the journey and why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, poor consultation with stakeholders. I'm going to go quickly here to the last one, resistance to change. And it falls on the senior leadership team to understand the dynamics and the psychology between um, involved in change initiatives. What I found over the last number of years, the most difficult people to change are comfort zone managers in an organization 5, 10 or 15 years, don't want to rock the boat, and the choice is simple. Come with us on the journey or step aside. And one of the reasons why Lean fails is that uh, we have resistance at mid-management level. Tips for staying lean. Um, you can go through these and I can send out uh, because time is limited uh, in this presentation to you if you want, you can get the um, email there. 
leadership commitment. We said that uh, three times already. Uh, it's got to be from start to finish. And it's more effective in lean to make small, consistent uh, gains. But hold the fort. Don't go back to the old way. So now you're changing culture. And change takes time. It's understandable that at the end of a recession, employers want to see um, an impact on the bottom line. Not every change initiative is going to result in a positive impact on the bottom line. It takes time, perseverance, and tenacity. And nothing happens in an organization without people. And we keep that in mind. Go to me and Matthew. It's all about you.